My friend gave him a playful jab, but he didn't take it very well. The vibe completely shifted then. I never thought I'd actually ask for relationship advice on Reddit. I have talked to my friends, family, and therapist, but I still feel the need for different opinions. What better than thousands of opinions from strangers? As you can see, it's really bad. I'll tell my story using fictional names for privacy and for everyone to understand clearly. My name is Alice, I am 25 years old and have been in a relationship for two years now. My boyfriend Luke is also 25. I am absolutely crazy about him. Never thought I'd find the perfect boyfriend until we started dating. He is incredibly sweet, treats me like a goddess he adores, remembers the smallest references of our relationship and gives me gifts related to them. And sometimes my family loves him more than they love me. Conclusion. He is amazing, I'll love him forever, seriously. We didn't have much of a perfect or easy start, the beginning of our relationship was a complete mess. Luke used to be best friends with my ex-boyfriend. I know, lame, right? Even worse, I cheated on my ex with Luke, and that's why we're together. Before you judge, I'll explain the complicated history of my past relationship. I was 20 when I started dating my ex-boyfriend Eric, he was also my age. I met him and Luke at college. We were all under different degrees, but went to the same campus so we'd always see each other around. We went to the same parties, they started being friends with my friends. Eric and I became closer and closer until we kissed at a campus party, and he asked me out on a date. For the next three years, part of my life was dedicated to Eric. I never thought of myself as the kind of girl who puts her boyfriend as the biggest priority in life. At the time, I fought against that feeling a lot. I reminded myself that with Eric or no Eric, I needed to achieve my academic and professional goals because they are my actual priority. The problem was that our relationship was very high maintenance. If I didn't give him enough attention or distance myself to study for my tests, he would feel hurt and neglected. I caught myself many times thinking and wondering about how he was feeling, not just regular boyfriend thoughts. He was in my mind so often it was annoying and distracting. I loved him, but it was overwhelming to be with him. I don't like to think or talk much about my relationship with Eric. It wasn't a very healthy one, and he's kind of a sensitive topic between me and Luke. Me and Eric both struggled with mental health issues. We understood and supported each other, but with time. Without noticing, we got so lost and involved in them that we just lived in a depressive rabbit hole together. When the academic stress was too much, Eric developed the habit of drinking, a lot, to forget about his problems. It got worse during the third year of our relationship. That's when Luke started being more present in the situation. They lived in their college dorm with two other boys. That year, Luke moved out to live with his girlfriend off campus but she ended up breaking up with him and paying the rent for the rest of the year because she felt guilty. He still lived there, but was always around his old dorm since no student was assigned to his room. I asked for his help very often, usually when Eric was throwing up drunk and locked in the bathroom. He definitely handled it better than me. Seeing him genuinely care about Eric made me feel less stressed about the situation. These episodes weren't so usual, but every time they happened, a part of me would love Eric a little bit less. I had to listen to him say the worst things about me and pretend they never happened, because he wouldn't remember them the next day. One night I was supposed to meet my boyfriend at their dorm because we were going to the movies together. Eric said he'd be home by 6.30, which was when his class ended. That way we could watch the 7 p.m. movie session. I showed up at 6 o'clock and found Luke watching TV by himself in the living room. We talked and watched his favorite TV show while I waited for Eric. I waited for an hour and a half and he still hadn't shown up. Luke stared at me with a merciful look on his face every now and then. He felt sorry for me. It wasn't hard to tell. Do you think he is okay? Should I go after him? I asked Luke around eight. Luke said he probably got caught up with his teacher and just forgot to tell me. I knew immediately he was just trying to make me feel better while I got stood up and made the 15th call to my boyfriend. I kept thinking he could have been robbed or something, but Luke reminded him we were inside the campus. Even if he tried really hard, nothing dangerous would happen to him. I stayed only to yell at him. I went over and over our soon-to-happen fight in my head. I mentally organized everything I had to say to that jerk when he finally showed up. It was past nine when he opened the front door. I didn't think I remembered so many details, but I guess it is easy to remember the reasons why I was angry. Having to wait three hours without a single text made me pretty pissed. I was eating the ice cream Luke offered me for pity when I saw Eric walk in. I left the bowl on the center table and got up ready to yell at him. When he stumbled his way in with his eyes barely open and slurred speech, I wanted to pick up the ice cream bowl and smash it in his head. You are drunk? I asked with the most angry voice tone I could pull. He started to excuse himself. I yelled and cursed at him. 
He tried to apologize, but when I made him angry, he just threw back at me not very understandable, but angry words. Luke was just sitting on the couch, staring at us completely silent and shocked. He didn't want to get involved, but also didn't have the nerve to move a muscle away from there. I couldn't stop anxiously yelling at Eric to a point he started walking towards his bedroom, pretending to ignore me. When I pulled his arm to get his attention again, I just felt a huge knockout in my face after he screamed, You are such a bitch. He punched me right in the nose. I felt my blood pressure drop immediately. My vision started to go black and I heard Luke yell words I couldn't understand. It felt like my head was underwater and I could barely hear the muffled sound of their voices. My nose was bleeding a lot. When I raised my head, I saw Luke holding Eric's arms and body, stopping him from getting to me. Luke looked at me, checking if I was okay. When I looked back at him, he told me to wait in the stairs outside. I didn't even question him and just ran out of the apartment while I heard Eric calling my name crying. I sat on the dorm stairs and couldn't hold back the tears, feeling them weirdly blend with my nosebleed. Until today, I believe this moment represents the worst heartbreak I ever had. I was with Eric for three years and seeing him raise his hand at me as if it was nothing made me question part of my feelings for him, while I was sure the other part had just died right at that moment. Luke came back trying to hide the small tears on his face after he made sure I was okay. I wasn't, but I was alive and conscious. He said, let's get out of here and take care of your nose. I locked Eric in his room and called our roommate to come and check on him. Luke took me to his apartment. I felt calmer being off campus. I really didn't want to be in a place he could find me. When we got to Luke's apartment, he cleaned and took care of my nose, gave me a clean shirt, which wasn't stained with blood, and made me a cup of tea. He seemed hesitant to talk about what just happened with me. He kept repeating, it's okay now. I was quiet trying to process everything, trying and failing not to relive the last 30 minutes. No. Luke told me to sleep in his bed. He offered to sleep on the couch and I didn't argue. I started randomly crying while he was showing me where the extra blankets were. Luke sat by my side without saying a word and just hugged me. I cried for a very long time on his shoulder, but he didn't seem to mind. He asked if I wanted to watch a movie to get distracted and I accepted it. Definitely wouldn't have been able to sleep with the mess which was going on in my mind. I woke up the next morning on the couch with Luke's arm around me while I laid my head on his shoulder. We accidentally slept watching TV, but I felt safe and comfortable with his contact, so I didn't complain. I guess Luke wasn't feeling weird about the situation. He saw me more as a broken thing he needed to take care of than a girl he could actually get. It was good. I really needed a friend at that moment. So much I even spent the weekend at his apartment, even with Eric begging me to let him in and talk. At least Luke said I could stay as much as I wanted, and what I wanted the most was to be away from Eric. That Sunday was my last night at Luke. We ordered pizza and talked about the thousands of calls, texts, and everything else Eric did as a way to try to apologize to me. I didn't want to talk to him. Luke also thought it was a good idea not to. We spent all night talking. I was so used to his physical touch it became natural in those couple of days. So we hugged a lot. We were cleaning up the kitchen when Luke said he thought Eric didn't deserve me, and that he could never treat a woman the way Eric treated me. He looked at me deeply while saying that, so I gave myself to the intrusive thought of kissing Luke and felt butterflies when he kissed me back. We slept together that day, we also didn't talk about it. At all. The situation was complicated, we both wanted to do it, but neither of us wanted to discuss how much we were affecting someone we both loved, who had serious alcoholic problems. Speaking of Eric, his friends called his parents who decided to check him into rehab. His mom called asking me to go with them on Monday. She said she understood what he had done to me and she didn't expect me to forgive him. She wanted me to be there in the beginning of his recovery, to offer support in the place of causing a crisis when breaking up with him. I didn't want to make things worse, so not very willingly I got into a car with my boyfriend and his family. Luke asked me if I wanted him to be there, but that would have just made the two hours drive even more awkward. Our school was in a small city, so there weren't many nearby clinics pleasing enough to his parents. Eric tried to talk to me during the entire ride, but I just kept answering, I am not talking about this in front of your parents. I was definitely breaking up with Eric. I just needed to wait for things to be stable in his life. While that happened, I just went to visit days to catch things up and play cards with him. Me and Luke kept on seeing each other. Eric was in rehab. I couldn't break up with him or else he would run away from the clinic and show up drunk at my door. And I also resented him for what he did to me. I tried to look at the bigger picture, but I always told myself violence in a relationship is unacceptable. And I wasn't going to forgive Eric for what he did. I didn't exactly feel guilty about it, Luke did. But as our feelings for each other got deeper, he let himself get involved. 
I was starting to have strong feelings for Luke because my feelings for Eric died a few months before when he decided to start making the worst decisions of his life. It was natural, easy, romantic, and light. Even my grades got better. When Eric was in my daily life, I lost a lot of time making him feel good. Now I could study and date someone who distracted me from my problems and wasn't the actual problem. I broke up with Eric a month and a half after he got into rehab. He was still there but doing a lot better. He was upset but had accepted our breakup was inevitable. I also told him I was with Luke. It made things a little worse, but I couldn't lie to him. In the end, his reaction was better than I expected, and in that moment, my story with Eric ended. Two years later, I look back and don't regret anything I did. Luke is the best thing that ever happened to me. Our relationship is amazing, but we are going through a hard phase. After a trip we took with some friends, things have been weird. Luke seems to be with something related to our past on his mind. We have argued a few times, and I'm very worried. One of our best friends planned a birthday trip to a beach in San Diego. We spent the weekend there and in one of our late night conversations with the group we were talking about relationships, experiences, heartbreak, cheating, etc. We were used to doing this in every occasion. Everyone there were couples, but we didn't have a problem talking about our past dating experiences. Uh, one of the girls said she once cheated her high school boyfriend with her older brother's friend. We were laughing about her story because she ended up falling for the guy she cheated with and got dumped by both of them. I then joked saying Luke was my side piece that had worked out, but his reaction wasn't good. While everyone was laughing, he stared at me annoyed. No one noticed and he didn't say anything, but when we got to our room, we started arguing trying to keep it low so that no one could hear us. He said he didn't feel comfortable bringing up what happened with Eric into a conversation. All of our friends were in our lives when it happened. They went to college with us. They knew Eric. We were already very close and they all supported our decision of me and Luke being together and none of them are close to Eric. It didn't seem like a problem to talk about it with them because it isn't a big deal in our lives today. But Luke gets a little triggered when someone mentions Eric. I had made jokes like that before and he didn't seem to mind. But that day something was more intense than usual. Luke said it's impossible to control the weight on his conscience when someone mentions Eric. He was like a ghost in his life. It seemed to him that I forgot and moved on completely while he was stuck in the morals of his head. He was also really angry with the term side piece I used talking about him. He doesn't want the beginning of our relationship to seem like an affair, which kind of was. That's probably why it bothers him so much. I guess he felt that way other times I mentioned Eric, but knowing Luke, he probably didn't say anything because he wants me to feel safe to talk about past traumas, especially since we were both there in this one. Either way, it's a tough subject for him, I knew that, but didn't think it was something he got extremely anxious over. I apologized and said I wouldn't talk about it anymore, I had no reason to. He said it was fine, but he was still a little weird the next day, which was when we came home from the trip. On the road, a couple of friends came in our car, but in one hour they were dead asleep in the back seat, leaving me and Luke to the awkward silence and a song we could barely hear because of the low volume. I felt he was looking at me. I just kept looking forward and watching the road. I think I want to sit down and talk to Eric. When I heard him say it, I internally screamed, wondering why the subject wasn't over yet. I asked where this feeling was coming from and why. He just answered that he needed closure because he hasn't talked to Eric since the day he had a physical fight with drunk Eric to lock him in his room. He didn't want to make amends, he still wanted to keep Eric as a ghost from his past, but they apparently still had unfinished business. It's your decision. I'll support you either way. Just won't talk to him. I finished the conversation and Luke said he'd think about it better. <clears throat> Last Wednesday, three days after we got home from the trip with my boyfriend still acting cold and weird, I was at work and got a text message from Luke in the afternoon. Here's what he said. Hey beautiful, how's your day going? I couldn't get my mind out of what we talked about at Sam's trip. After these few days, my mind seemed more organized and I'm not that freaked out about it anymore. I'm sorry for being a jerk about this there and making you feel bad. I forgot to tell you that in that morning, Alan asked me about Eric because he bumped into him in an event at our old college. He asked if I ever talked to him again that just brought the whole thing back to my mind and ruined my day. I took it out on you, I'm sorry, and hope you can forgive me. You know how I feel about Eric, I don't want to know how he's doing or pretend what he did to you was fine, I'm not fine, and you shouldn't either. I have no interest in his life, but I can't keep feeling like shit every time I think about him. So I decided to contact him, I haven't yet, but I intend to. In respect for you, I won't talk about it if you don't want me to. I know you handle this a lot better than me, but you probably don't want to unnecessarily relive this, so just let me know. <laughs> you went through a lot with him. I don't want to keep dumping this on you. I love you, okay? A lot. I'm making it up to it. Let's go to dinner tonight. Tell me what time you'll be home, please. Bye, my love. 
I texted him saying it was all fine, but I couldn't help worrying about this reunion. I know deep down in me that Luke will get somehow even more affected seeing Eric. It isn't a good idea in my opinion, and I will stay tense until Sunday, which is when they are going for coffee. Luke got his number with some guy from our old college. They talked and decided to meet. What are your opinions? Should I be worried? Should I go with him? I'm scared. Luke has been strange for days, and my insecure self keeps thinking he'll break up with me. But because of guilt? I can't think straight about this anymore. Maybe he's acting like this because of the tension with seeing Eric, I don't know. He's distant, and I hope it doesn't get worse when he comes back from that date with Eric. I'll update as soon as I can. Update. Hey Reddit, I'm back with updates about my messy situation. Last time I checked in, my boyfriend Luke was meeting my ex-boyfriend Eric, who used to be his best friend. I told Luke I was fine with him meeting Eric only if I could pick him up after, so I told him to go without his car. I got there half an hour before Luke asked me to because I was dying waiting for time to pass, and I wanted to see how the conversation was going. I parked in front of the coffee shop, which had glass walls, so I could see them sitting together and talking peacefully. Eric seemed fine, he looked good and normal. I kept watching them talk, they sometimes laughed, it felt like I returned three years in the past. Seeing them talk as if they were still roommates gave me chills. A lot of you said Luke just wants to unload his conscience, which is actually true. I just don't trust Eric and don't want to think about the possibility of them becoming friends again. I got comments asking if we heard anything about Eric, not really. People weren't used to talking about him with us, most of our friends aren't even close to him. I texted Luke in the exact hour he told me to get there. I saw him pick up the phone and text me back. I'll be out in a second. Do you want anything? I answered him saying I just wanted him out of there and he laughed. For a second I thought of walking to the front of the coffee shop and talking to them. I have no control of my impulses, so I waited for them to get to the door and rushed out of the car. Luke stared at me as if I was crazy. Eric was with his back turned to me, but when he saw Luke's eye wander behind him, Eric turned and looked at me like he had seen a ghost. <laughs> Hearing Eric say my name was like a punch in my stomach, I immediately regretted leaving the car. I said hello and asked how the talk was. They both agreed on the fine. They seemed fine. Eric started asking about my life and how I was doing. I just felt like I wanted to throw up, but instead I said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Just wanted to say hello because it has been a long time since we've seen each other. Can we go, Luke? I looked desperate at my boyfriend and he let out a quiet laugh. I'm sorry, it's uncomfortable, I know. It's nice seeing you guys. Eric said, smiling. I kind of just wanted to punch him, but whatever. Luke and I said goodbye, but before we could leave, Eric started talking again. I'm sorry for everything, Alice. You didn't deserve anything of what I put you through. I hope you guys always stay happy. He expected some kind of answer, but Luke and I just stared at each other with blank looks on our faces. Then he simply smiled and walked away. You were very brave for doing this, Luke told me on the way to the car. I asked if he got the answers and closure he needed because I didn't want to go through that again. He laughed and said I didn't have to worry about that anymore. What could have they talked about? Luke didn't give me much hint, but he led me to understand he never reached out to Eric because if Luke had to see him, he'd fight him again, except harder for what he did to me. <laughs> During the years when he thought about Eric, he just thought about fighting him and somehow making him pay for all the pain he caused in our lives. But he felt tired of those angry feelings coming and going back around. That was his way of dealing with them. It has been two days since they talked and things have apparently come back to normal. A part of me will keep wondering if Eric will contact him back and if Luke will answer. But I'll keep the paranoid thoughts to myself because I don't want to hear that name ever again. It's been a long time, my fellow Redditors. I can vividly remember that the last time I posted here was when I shared my college experience with you all. That has been many, many years ago. Well, this experience I'm about to share is very different from the last one. It's not a jolly experience at all. It's one of lies and deceit. The last time I posted here, I told you all about a girl I met in college, right? Well, we got married a few years after college. Now she's cheating on me. I just recently found out that my wife is cheating on me. For reference sake, I'm a 30 years old man who's married to a 28 years old woman. My wife's name is Sheila and my name is Fred. So, my dear Redditors, I know you all are wondering what suddenly went wrong, lol. I mean, I wonder what happened too. We got married after college and I honestly thought I married an innocent woman. Now I found out she's cheating on me. I don't know who the guy is or how she knows him. I'm very grateful that I found out early or else I'd have been making a fool of myself. Can you believe how ironic this situation is? To think that we're planning to go to a family event in two weeks 
and then I find out my wife is fucking another man. This event will have both our families and extended families in attendance. It's a yearly event that we have done over the years. I was even planning to get us new outfits, so we'd attend the event like the happy couple we were. But now I guess plans have changed. If you're wondering if my wife knows, no, she doesn't. She had no idea that I caught her cheating on me. She's been acting like her normal self, and I swear that if I didn't see it with my own two eyes, I'd have not noticed a single change in her. Before I go on, I'd like to use this medium to acknowledge how pretentious some women can be. I don't mean any disrespect to other women, but damn. My wife has shown me that she's a green snake in the green grass, literally. Her behavior is the same, nothing has changed. She's even telling me we need to get matching outfits this year so we can show off. How pathetic. She knows this event is a big deal because a lot of people will be in attendance. It's a three-day event and we be there for four days. I have something planned to show my wife that I can be pretentious too, but I need to tell you all how I caught my wife cheating first. It was a Monday morning and we were getting ready for work. I usually drop her off at work and pick her up when she's done. That day was no different. The routine was still the same. After eating breakfast, I drove her to her workplace. At first, my wife and I spent minutes in the car talking about the upcoming family trip and other random stuff. I was getting late, so I kissed her good bee before she left the car. My dear Redditors, have any of you ever been thankful for a flat tire before? Well, I was very thankful that I had a flat tire that day because it was the flat tire that saved me from thinking I had a real marriage. After my wife got out of the car, I turned on the car and drove off. Barely two minutes after leaving her workplace, my car stopped on the road. I'm thankful it didn't do more than that because when I got down, I discovered that I had a flat tire. I was getting late for work and had no time to call a mechanic, so I decided to go back to my wife's workplace on foot and tell her to help me get a mechanic during her lunch break since the car was still closer to her workplace. My dear Redditors, when I got there, I saw my wife exiting her workplace. I was surprised because I did not expect her to be outside by that time. She even nagged me in the morning that she had to get to work fast. I wanted to call out to my wife at first, but I stopped when I saw her walking towards a car. It was definitely not my car because my car was parked minutes away. You have to imagine the level of shock I felt when I saw my wife getting into an unknown car with a smile on her face. It was a tinted car, so I could not see what was going on inside. I hid behind another car and waited till she was done. At that point, I did not care about getting late for work. I just wanted to know what my wife was up to at that moment. She spent minutes in the car before she finally got out. Everything looked fine at first, but I noticed something that was very weird. My wife had red lipstick on. I know that's not a big deal on a normal day, but in that situation, it was. I vividly remembered that my wife had black lipstick on that morning. I'm so sure about this because I kissed her goodbye in the car before she left, and I saw that she had black lipstick on. I'm her husband. I can't mistake her lipstick color. I knew what I saw in the morning was different from what I saw when she left that car. I watched her rush into her office before the car drove off. To be honest, I was very surprised to see what had transpired. It made no sense. Back then, a part of me was very suspicious, but I decided not to confront her yet. I know some of you might agree that a lipstick color is not enough evidence to accuse someone of cheating. But to be honest, I became extremely suspicious. I did not even call my wife and ask her to call a mechanic for me. I took a cab to work that day. I barely got any work done because I kept thinking about the incident that transpired. I did not just brush it off and call it a coincidence. Oh no, I made sure I got to the root of the matter. I went home that day and decided to spy on my wife the next day. I dropped her off at work as usual, but that day, I waited for her to come out secretly. I waited for so long that I began to doubt if she was even going to show up at all. That's to tell you just, just how long I had to wait. But, my dear Redditors, my wife came out after some time. I did not see the car I saw the day before, so I thought she just came out to buy something. But after some minutes, the car drove into the garage. My wife got into the car as usual. This time she came out with no lipstick at all. I was practically frustrated with the situation because I hate being left in the dark. There was no need for me to see her naked before I knew she had to be cheating on me. My instincts told me that my suspicions were right, but I did not work on my instincts. 
I decided to trap my wife during the weekend and see if she would fall for it. My fellow Redditors, I did something very funny. I told Sheila that I was needed at work urgently and would not be back till it was late in the evening. Sheila believed me and walked me out of the house. Of course, I lied to her. I was not needed at work that day. I went on foot, so my car was in the house. I waited outside our gate at a hidden spot to see if Sheila would come out and go anywhere. I practically waited for two hours and almost gave up. But Sheila did come outside. She did not just come outside, she drove outside. My wife drove my car outside and zoomed off before I could even understand what was going on. I had to call a taxi immediately to follow her. It was almost an impossible task because she was far ahead of us. But since it's my car, I was able to tell it apart from the numerous cars on the road. Sheila drove for a very long time. I was so worried because I did not expect her to drive for almost an hour straight. Well, I already suspected that she was cheating on me, so I was mostly worried about my car. Even before Sheila stopped the car at her desired location, I knew she had to be going to her lover's place. That was the only reasonable explanation I had in my head. Well, my fellow Redditors, I was not wrong at all, because Sheila did stop in front of an estate. It looked like an estate that had different people residing in it. The taxi I was in stopped far ahead so she would not suspect a thing. After Sheila got into the gate, I got outside of the taxi and followed her in. Luckily, I saw her getting into a room on time. I marked the room number then waited outside for a few minutes before going to the door. I planned to knock at first, but what I saw from the window was enough to make me halt my plans. It was just a tiny opening, but I was able to see Sheila's bra on the couch. Yes, I saw my wife's bra on the couch. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. The window was open, but no one was in the living room from what I could tell. It was my wife's bra that caught my attention. It's actually funny now that I think about it. The fact that my wife had the audacity to grab my own car keys and drive my car to her lover's house so he could sleep with her is just the highest level of crazy. I'm a man. I can't tell you. I was unaffected. I was angry, but first and foremost, I was disappointed. It's not something you see every day. You don't just follow your wife to an unknown estate only to find her bra lying on the couch. One thing about me is that I do not like taking reflexive actions. I don't like jumping into things without giving them a thought first. I could have just knocked on the door and stormed into the room calling Sheila a cheat. I could have gotten into a fight with the man then caused a scene and cussed them out. But no, I didn't. It's not because I'm weak or too kind, lol. It's far from that. I chose to be silent so I could show Sheila just how ruthless I can be. If I'd caught her, she'd just apologize and cry and then that's it. I don't want a simple resolution of things. I want her to feel the heat. I want her to cry. The fact that she took my own car and drove to her lover's house is not just disrespectful, but disgusting. What's more disgusting is the fact that a woman I've been married to for three years cheated on me. I don't care to know why she did it. Before I left the estate that day, I saw the same car I saw at Sheila's workplace. There was no need for any more verification. The truth was right there before my eyes. When I got home that day, I practically promised myself to show Sheila just how ruthless I can be. I was not gonna let her off the hook for any reason at all, and I need her to know that. I needed to do something that would make her regret everything she did. I could cheat back, but no, that will not hurt as much. I'm not saying I do not plan to cheat. Oh no, I'm still going to cheat on her, but that will be after the family event. The perfect revenge plan I got together is to expose Sheila in front of our families. The whole extended family from both sides will be in attendance. Even their friends will come that day. So, Reddit, that's the plan I have in place. It's a plan that I've carefully thought about since I found out Sheila was cheating on me. The fact that Sheila has been asking me about the family event and how we're going to prepare just makes me angrier every day. My initial plan was just to cheat on her and teach her a few lessons that she'll never forget, but her consistent persistence to attend this family event in a grand style just unnerves me. I decided to give her the grand entry she desired so much by embarrassing her in front of everyone. That will be the best form of revenge for me. I also have another ulterior motive behind this. I want to get her family members on my side. So this is where I need your help, Reddit. I need ideas on how to go about this. I want ideas on how I can embarrass her in front of everyone. 
I already know the truth, but I'll need evidence to convince everyone else. I can't just come out and accuse her of cheating. I don't even plan on doing that at all because Sheila can just end up turning it around. At this point, I don't give two cents about our marriage and what happens to it after the event. As far as I'm concerned, I don't even have a wife. It's so stupid that a woman who is married feels it's okay to cheat. I don't even have the time to cheat. Does she think she's some kind of hotshot supermodel or what? I've had several opportunities to cheat without her even funding out, but I've been so focused on my work that cheating had not even been a topic in my thoughts. So, of course, it's surprising that a woman who is supposed to be working and figuring out how to make her marriage better is busy cheating on her husband. I think one thing Sheila doesn't understand is that it's always easier for men to get away with cheating. It's easier for men to move on after a divorce. I don't think she even understands the gravity of what she has done. I honestly can't care less because I'm already planning to start dating immediately after the family event is over. I don't care what the outcome is. I'm not staying faithful to an unfaithful woman. There is no way that's going to happen. For the people who most likely come into the comments section and tell me how two wrongs don't make a right, please save it. I really don't care about what is right at this point. All I care about is making sure I get revenge on Sheila in such a way that she'll be left flabbergasted. I mean it, literally. The problem now is how to get the perfect evidence together. That's a big deal for me. I don't know if it'll be possible to lead Sheila's lover to the family event. I mean, seeing is believing, and it will be the perfect way to bring out the truth. But the problem is that I don't even know what the guy looks like. I have not seen him before. I only recognize his car. And that's all. There's no way that I'll see him anywhere and even know it's him. If I'd seen his back or even his hair, it would have been a great lead, but I'm literally left with nothing. I need my fellow Redditors to drop their comments and tell me what they think I should do in this situation. That will be really helpful. I need as many ideas as possible because this has to be a perfect revenge plan. I can't even believe that many years after talking about my college experience, I'm here on Reddit again talking about a cheating experience. I honestly do wish I was the one who cheated. It will be less angering to be the one who cheated on your wife, lol. I might even ask myself why I did not think about it first. But, whatever. It is what it is. She cheated on me first, so she should get what's coming for her. The family event she's so obsessed with will shock her in such a way that will leave her speechless. I'll make sure I leave no stone unturned. In case you are wondering what I plan to do, don't worry. You'll know in the next update because I'm not even sure of how to execute my plan yet. The family event is in two weeks' time, so you all should help me as fast as you can. I need to have a plan in mind as soon as possible so I'll be able to execute it on time. I'll make an update to this post after the family event is over so I can tell you all what happened in the full details. I'll try to reply to as many comments as possible, but I strongly doubt I'll be able to reply to all. Stay safe and see you next time, Reddit. I'm counting on you all to help me. Revenge is not easy at all. It takes dedication. Update. Hi, Redditors. How have you all been? I'm back as promised, and this time, I'm here with all the details. It's been one heck of a full month. I know I promised you all that I'd give an update as soon as possible, but it's been one month now. And trust me, this is my definition of as soon as possible. I've been busy for the past few weeks. It's been a lot of work and a lot of commitment to settling the scores present. So let me take you all back to where we left off. I told you guys I needed ideas on how to embarrass my wife at the family event and you all did not leave me hanging. I got some great ideas, and I was able to put them into action. The idea that came up mostly was to follow my wife to her lover's house one more time, then get a picture of them together. Trust me, I did not want to follow this idea for many reasons. I just found it too difficult and full of bumps. I did not think I'll be able to execute it, but that was literally the only plan that was safe enough to carry out, so I went with it. I could not go by myself because that will only make the task more difficult, so I sent someone to take pictures of them. I gave the person all the information they needed so they would be able to carry out the task. The results I got at first were just pictures of them leaving her workplace together and pictures of Sheila going into his room. I didn't really get pictures of them doing anything intimate. It took another five days before I got a picture of them kissing in the car. The car was tinted and it was impossible to get a shot, but the person I sent got the picture when Sheila was about to leave the car. 
She opened the door to leave, but then the guy pulled her in for another kiss. Thankfully, he got the picture in time. To be honest, the guy I sent was almost caught by some of Sheila's colleagues. He had to lie that he was doing research in the company and that he was their assigned photographer. That almost got him arrested, but he was lucky to have finished the job on time. I had to pay the guy twice the money because of that fucking mishap. I spent a lot of money just getting the pictures alone. Imagine paying money for someone else's mistakes. The only thing that kept me from losing my shit back then was the fact that I had a plan in motion. I just kept encouraging myself to look at the end of the tunnel. In my case, the end of the tunnel was embarrassing for my wife. I just hoped they'd be light there. So, after getting the pictures and some of the recordings I needed together, I had my plan in motion. Sheila kept telling me how she could not wait for us to go to the family event. She told me how this year's event was going to be very different because many of her family friends were going to be in attendance. Anytime she came to the bedroom and told me how excited she was, I'd just laugh and tell her I couldn't wait too. It was very satisfying to know I was one step ahead of her. It was even more satisfying to know that she was looking forward to her own destruction. I know, that was an exaggeration, but trust me, I was very excited to see how the event would turn out. That event did not excite me as much as it excited me this year. So, let's get to the real deal. A few days after the family event, my wife got us matching outfits. I did not complain, and I even thanked her for it. The preparation for the event went on as it normally did. We got the gifts we usually bought for the family members. Sheila prepared some dishes in advance so we could eat it on the road. In other words, we were practically preparing for a swell time at the event. I'll still say this just for the sake of reference. Sheila did not suddenly stop cheating on me. I mean, she continued, and I know this because I kept an eye on her till we went on that trip. She left the house whenever she thought I went out or when I was asleep. Sometimes I could hear her running from the living room to the bathroom to take a phone call. The worst evidence I'd noticed was when I saw a soaked panty of hers in the handbag she brought from work. The next one was a mailboxer. Yes, I saw all these things even before we traveled for the event. With the way Sheila pretended like everything was fine, I'm very certain that she had no idea that I was aware of her cheating escapades. I did not also try to let her know that I knew anything about it. I continued acting like I was a fool. There was no need to let the cat out of the bag and raise the alarm unnecessarily. I knew that I had to be patient so I could give her a taste of her own medicine. It was not easy because sometimes I wanted to laugh in her face and tell her to stop hiding her phone under the sheets before she replied to text messages because I already knew she was chatting with her lover. But I had to control myself. To be honest, I think my patience actually paid off at the end of the day because I was able to achieve the desired results I had in mind. So guys, let me cut the long story short and get to how I exposed my wife at our family event. The first day at the event was just normal. There was nothing out of the ordinary because I wanted the first day to be as normal as possible. Sheila and I settled into our hotel room and had a good night's sleep. The next day at the hotel was when I decided to put my plans in motion. Our family members were all present for the official first day of the get-together. Even our friends and some family friends were present. It was nice to see everyone together again after one year. I was mostly interested in seeing Sheila's parents because I knew just how traditional they are. They like to brag about their well-cultured and well-mannered daughter. I could not wait to show them just how mannerless their daughter was. The first part of the event was watching a movie together in one big hall. It's something that we have done for many years before. That would have been the perfect opportunity to expose Sheila, but I did not go with that idea. I did not want to ruin the family event on the very first day we started the event. My plan initially was to link the photos to the projector and have it shown to everyone present, but I decided to wait. The real drama could come later, so I decided to create a mini drama. My dear Redditors, you all needed to see how pretentious Shayla had been with our family members. This woman acted like she was not the same person that was cheating on me. She joined other relatives to chat about marriage and relationships. The fakery was just too much for me and there were many moments that I just wanted to expose her right there and then. There were even instances where she would kiss me in front of her parents and hold hands with me. 
At first, I did not want to react, but as time went on, I would detach myself from her, snap at her in public, and even wipe her kisses away. I did it in such a way that even her own parents noticed. My parents called me aside to ask me if everything was fine, and I told them there was nothing wrong. I did not want to spoil the big surprise by making myself say things that will reveal the truth. But despite my efforts to make sure I don't reveal the truth before it's time, Sheila decided to mess with me. She had the audacity to FaceTime her lover while we were in our bedroom. That night, I pretended to be asleep while I heard Sheila's muffled voice under the bedsheet. I did not need any confirmation to know what had been going on. She was talking to her lover, and that was a fact I later discovered was true. I was so angry that I got up and grabbed her phone from her hands. That was when I saw him, the guy she was sleeping with. I did not recognize him as someone I knew, but he looked familiar. I knew that was a sign that she had been sleeping with him for a very long time. He ended the call immediately, but I did not let that stop me from doing what I had in mind. I grabbed Sheila's hands and dragged her out of the room. She kept wailing and pleading with me to listen to her, but I did not budge. I dragged her till we were in front of her parents' room, and then I pushed her till she was laying face down on the ground. I could not contain my anger, and I banged it on her parents' door. Yes, my dear ready tours, I made sure they knew something was going on outside. It did not take time before they came out of the room and demanded what was happening. They were even upset to see their daughter on the floor crying. My parents heard the noise too and left their rooms. We created such a scene that almost all the family members came out of their designated rooms to see what was going on. We were lucky to have booked our rooms at the other side of the hotel. Most people thought I'd laid my hands on her since they saw her crying, but I had to correct that narrative immediately. I told them how I caught Sheila FaceTiming her lover while I was in the room. I explained everything from beginning to the end, and I even went as far as showing them the pictures I had saved on my phone. That was not how I planned to reveal the truth, but I did not have the patience to wait till the next day anymore. I showed her parents and my parents first before the phone was passed around for anyone that cared to see what was going on. When I told you guys that we caused a scene, I meant it. We had pulled a crowd, but the only difference was that the people present were our own relatives. Her parents were practically speechless and they could not say anything to defend their daughter. I thought they'd preach about how well-mannered she is, just like they usually did, but I guess there was enough evidence on ground to show that their daughter was nothing close to being well-mannered. My parents and relatives were disappointed after seeing the pictures and some people even walked out. I was so angry that I recounted everything that had been going on for the past two weeks. I told them how Sheila had been sneaking out with my car. I know some of you might say you don't really like the way I went about it and how I exposed her publicly, but I do not care. Public humiliation was the perfect punishment for a woman that has no boundaries and self-respect. I did not humiliate her publicly because I needed support or validation. I did it because I knew that was the only way to truly get on her nerves and do something that she'd remember for a very long time. Sheila and her family have always been dedicated to their reputation and how people perceive them. I know this because her parents like to brag about every little thing. They claim to have perfect children with the best manners. I will not lie, that's one of the things that drew me to Sheila. I thought she was well-mannered and innocent. I know that's a wrong reason to look for a partner, but that was my reason. I just did not expect her to be the exact opposite of what I'd imagined. Well, I guess that was a medium for me to learn my lesson and not make the same mistakes twice. Sheila's parents were very disappointed and they literally walked out on us after screaming on top of their lungs. My parents told everyone to go back to bed and that we'd settle everything the next day. When my parents said settle, they meant ties were gonna be broken, literally. But at the end of the day, it was still my choice if I wanted to stay with Sheila and work on our marriage. My dear Redditors, what do you think my choice was? That same night, after everyone went back to their rooms, Sheila grabbed me by the collar and cussed me out. She screamed on top of her lungs and accused me of ruining her life for something so trivial. Yes, Reddit, my wife told me that all she did was cheated and that she did not deserve the kind of punishment that I gave to her. I thought she was joking at first. Yes, trust me, I thought it was a joke. But it wasn't. The stupid woman really stood in front of me and accused me of tarnishing her family's reputation. I don't understand how a woman who cheated and made the decisions by herself will accuse me of tarnishing her image. Lol, am I the one who cheated? 
I can still remember how I grabbed her shoulders in a very tight grip and tossed her to the nearby wall. You must be fucking mad. Are you so dumb that you think I'll fall for your stupid stunts? You think I regret embarrassing you just now? Those were the words I said to her. Sheila looked like she could kill me at that moment. I could see the anger in her eyes, but what made me really happy was the fact that she looked surprised. She did not expect me to have caught her cheating and even bring the evidence to her family. She asked me how I got the pictures and where I got them from, but I did not give her a reply. I tried walking away, but she grabbed a nearby vase and tried to throw it at me. If I did not look back in time, she would have trashed the vase on my back. I am not proud of it, and I have never been raised to hit a woman, but I slapped her that night. I do not support domestic violence, and I still regret slapping her till this day, but I could not stomach the fact that she tried to throw a vase at me. That case could have killed me right there and then. After slapping her, I warned her to stay away from me and told her that our marriage was over. That night, I locked her out of the room and slept off. I don't care how she slept that night or where she spent the night. I was so angry because I knew I could have gotten to the point of doing something I regretted. I got what I wanted by exposing her and tarnishing her image, and that's the most satisfying revenge ever. The next day, Sheila decided to cause another scene. She tried to jump on me when I went to use the restroom. She accused me of ruining her family once again. She said her parents and relatives were no longer speaking to her and that it was all my fault. My dear Redditors, you all needed to see how she whined and cried like a baby. To be sincere, I couldn't care less about her cheating anymore. What gave me more satisfaction was the fact that she was being isolated by her loved ones. I loved every bit of it. I did not bother myself with trying to fight her back because I knew what her game plan was. She wanted me to raise my hand and hit her again, but I did not fall for it. That very day, I left the family event and went back to my house. I packed her things and sent them back to her parents' house. They were not back home then, but I left it with their caretaker. I knew Sheila was not dumb enough to come back to the house for anything, and that was a bonus for me. I wanted to divorce her instantly, but I refused to do it immediately. I needed to cheat on her first, and so I did. I cheated on her days later and made sure she found out about it. I got many threatening messages from her and her new lover, but I blocked their numbers and moved on with my life. I don't plan on filing for a divorce yet because I'm not ready for the tedious paperwork. It's been barely two weeks since the incident, and I'm just living my life. Whenever I'm ready for the tedious paperwork, I'll send her the papers. My dear Redditors, I can't even believe that my wife had the audacity to accuse me of ruining her reputation after she cheated on me. It's disgusting and extremely narcissist. But guess what? I do not care. I got my revenge and I don't care what she thinks about it. Thank you to all the Redditors that have taken their time to engage with this post. It's been an amazing ride. I hope my next life experience will be better than this. LOL. See you all in the next post, whenever that may be.